Thank you. I'm Ellen with blackfilm.com. Hi, William. How are you? All right. How are you doing? I am well. I feel like I know you so well already, but I have to remind myself it's Marcus Watkins that I know and, <laughs> and now love. Uh, beyond the enormous impact um, and success of season one, what was it about season two that compelled you to become a part of it? Um, well, I, I mean, I think it actually kind of tracks back to season one in that I thought that it was uh, a, a really nuanced sort of discussion of uh, just what it is to be a person and, and you know, who, how do you find love? Um, do you want to? Do you want to date? You know, it's like, and, and it's like a larger character study in so many ways. And there's things that felt very real about it. like. It wasn't a person that's like, I'm a mess. My life is so hard. And they live in like on Central Park South. You know, it's like it was it was like, you know, a bunch of people in a tiny place, you know, and there's so many things that just felt real to me um, that I, I was like, oh, this is this is uh, not taking for granted that just existing in New York is actually kind of kind of tough. And then you throw on top of that trying to date it it can just, it can, it can, you can get worked. And so like, I, um, I, I really love that. And I, I think that, you know, when Sam approached me about playing this character and some of the ideas that he had for it, I just thought that it would be a really interesting way to sort of dive into um, what it is to be a person that is, that, that thinks they have their life figured out and they don't and thinks that, you know, there's, that have sort of created the ideal, the, the ideal idea of their life, but actually haven't created the thing that they actually want. And, um, you know, I think it's also interesting to, you know, when coming out of a long relationship, when it's like, there's, it's one thing to see like, oh, so-and-so cheated, oh, so-and-so betrayed somebody. And then it's like, it ends. And then it's like, well, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna date. It's like. What happens when it's like the relationship isn't bad, but it's just kind of over and like the, the, the pain of that where it's like you, you know, you're, you know, I feel like there's something about that that feels a little bit more truthful to me when, um, you know, it's like not all relationships end in like a, a huge like conflagration that consumes all within 20 feet. It's like, it's sometimes they just stop because the passion is gone or they don't really know each other in the way that they thought they did. And like, that's, that's, that's painful um, when you still love someone, but you're not necessarily in love with them. And, um, and so that like is an interesting way to sort of kick off a story. Um, and so like that, that really, I found that really intriguing and I just, just wanted to see what that did. And it's interesting that you say um, that because when it happens that way, it's okay sometimes. It's not the end of the world. You just kind of have to take it in and yeah. do with it what you must. Uh, one of the things I loved about the story arc is that it, it starts out looking like it's just about a romantic relationship, but it's so much more. And that's what made me connect to it. Um, and it takes me back to a line in the synopsis that now after watching all 10 episodes, it just hits different. Marcus is forced to rebuild his life brick by brick. There's something about that that just hits differently. Can you share yeah. a bit about Marcus's rebuilding journey and how it feeds into the bigger picture of his life? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, um, you know, I think it goes back to sort of he's made he's crafted, he's very well crafted the idea of the life that he thinks he wants. Right. And, um, you know, like when you get married at, at an early age, um, which, you know, like it, it was, it's not early, early, but you know, like to me, it's early, you know, and, um, you know, I think, in, you know, getting married in your twenties, that, that feels early to me. I'm, I'm a late bloomer, but then like, um, you know, but there's there's a part of you where you put your personality, part of that is sewn up in the relationship and sewn up in, to, it's woven into the fabric of the person that you've picked. And, and when that gets torn away, a piece of you gets torn away with that as well. And it, it sort of turns into, you know, I, I think 
it, it feels very real that, you know, like you're, you're not really quite sure who you are yeah. because the thing that you, you know, you're doing all the right things and you're supposed to be happy. You're supposed to be settled. You're not supposed to be having uh, big questions about your identity after 30, you know, like I figured like you're supposed to kind of already have settled into something and no, I mean, I thought that I would be settled in who I was completely by the time I was 30. I was dead ass wrong, but I mean, like I really <laughs> thought that I would have all of the, all of the answers by then in some, to some degree. And, you know, a lot of us don't, a lot of us are still kind of floundering and a little bit lost. And I think that Marcus, you know, once that relationship dissolves, realizes that he's lost he didn't you know notice it in 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 the marriage but um you take that away and you know you strip away his idea of himself and he's like well wait a minute who who am what what who am i what am i doing and uh he does have to kind of piece that all back together in a very very messy way <laughs> over the course of the season and I loved Marcus's vulnerability and just, you know, willingness to your point, be messy, um, whether he wanted to or not. Again, that's a very relatable um, point of view because uh, we all kind of go through that. And so the, the multi-leveled evolution of Marcus Watkins is epic. That, that was one of my biggest takeaways from it. What was your intention and how you wanted to show his emotional arc? Because I thought it was, it was done beautifully. I, uh, thanks. I, um, you know, it's just sort of moment to moment and allowing, kind of just allowing myself to be surprised by what happens next. I think that um, Marcus is, you know, often underprepared for some of the situations that he finds himself in. And I think that, you know, like it's, it's best to sort of just let that hit you in the face and just be like, I don't know how to react, but I need to react in some way. And um, and so I think that in a lot of respects, I wasn't in control of like crafting necessarily how he responded to certain things. I mean, like the script layered that a lot of that in, but part of it was just sort of like trying to be like, I don't know what's coming next. I don't know how this, you know, what this situation is going to be. I don't know what this person's about to say to me and trying to like, you know, wipe that feeling away and just you know let it uh let, let the impact of uh of what my scene partners are doing in these scenes like just hit and see what happens and um and and, and so it's like a lot of it is just allowing it to be uh, like allowing myself to be surprised and being kind of out of control of a lot of it um i, I feel like that's that's really useful uh, for me as a performer to just kind of feel a little bit like I'm a, a little bit out of control is, is yeah. Mm. Yeah. And so that's yeah, actually a great segue to my next question. You wear two hats on this project. You're an executive producer and you're also the lead actor. How do those two roles inform each other, would you say? Uh, well, as you know, as you know, this is my first time getting to be an EP. I think one of the cool things about that is getting to weigh in on the arc of the story and like, um, and really sort of, you know, just getting to throw my two cents in about the, the overall journey. And also what are, you know, in some, some of the smaller bits of like what we're actually saying, you know, like, do we want to be saying certain things with these scenes? Um, and, you know, like, are like how many, how many, do we want to open up this particular can of worms by doing this with the scene, you know, because then it's going to become very much about like, I, like where, where will certain ideas become more of a ballast on the story and which, which things are going to become, uh, will actually kind of help the story sort of sail in a way that is, uh, you know, more useful and also sometimes more like, like easier for me to lean into the truth to, uh, the truth of, um, and, um, so that was that was that was cool. It's also nice to be able to uh, weigh on stories, weigh in on stories before you get to set, and to feel like I'm allowed to speak up about things that are that I'm bumping on, um, as opposed to doing it on set and being like I'm having a hard time, and then having to rewrite it all quick and just like you know and and 
not getting to sort of calibrate things going forward, um, you know, or like making changes in the moment that will alter the calibration of things later. Yeah. Um, it's better to have a little bit more lead time to sort of to 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 craft certain things and to help craft certain things um, so that we have an eye to it later on. You know, so it, those elements that are sort of holdovers from certain moments in earlier episodes, uh, we've already been able to sort of clear some of that out and, and rework some of it. So that's that's a cool thing. I think the other thing also is, um, you know, like I think being like the, the central character of a show, this is like my first time doing that. And uh, beyond just, you know, having the biggest line load and being on set the most, I think that it's also setting the tone and helping to set a tone on set of how we're going to behave. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I've had the great fortune of working with some, some lead actors who have set really great examples and set a really great energy and a really great vibe. And, you know, seeing how important that is for people to feel in, to feel comfortable to come in and do their best work and to contribute and just bring all of themselves and ask all the questions and feel free. It's like, you know, setting up, like being a part of creating an environment that allows people to do the work that they do really, really well uh, is is a big part of that. And so, um, and so I enjoyed it. I enjoyed being able to, um, you know, sort of hopefully foster an, envir an environment that allowed folks to feel like, feel empowered to do the, the work that they know how to do and to do it at the level that they feel that they're able to do it at. And that kind of came across um, in terms of the synergy between the cast. Um, it just felt very authentic. It felt like I was kind of peeking into um, real life experiences and, and um, that says a lot to you know, what you just spoke about. So thank you for sharing that. Um, okay. Seeing the black male perspective um, brought me so much joy because it's not something that's shown on TV um, often, especially from the lens of self-exploration. Did you feel any pressure about presenting that point of view or did it feel more like a sense of duty? Like how, what were your thoughts on that? Uh, you know, I felt like, um, you know, it's, I guess I always think of this in terms of this is, this is one black male's perspective. You know, it is, it is one person and I'm, I'm like I'm hoping that the specificity resonates with certain people um, you know it's obviously not going to land with everybody every aspect of Marcus's life but I, I like to think that you know there sometimes the more specific you get the more universal it winds up feeling because people can find something that is a parallel in some way to something they've experienced or felt and um, and that was that was my hope um, I think that it's like it's, you know, I, 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 you know, it's not like there's a dearth of, of, of romantic comedies featuring a black cast, you know, <laughs> but it's, you know, I, 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 I do feel like, um, you know, this, the, with the nature of this series, jumping from character to character is really important not to just hang on one demographic all the time, you know, like we start out with, the first season being a white woman to jump to a, a black man. It's like, it's the same show. Um, come with us. It's just, you know, maybe like you, I, you know, like maybe, you know, a largely white audience watch that show. Uh, it's, it's my hope that, you know, all audiences will come to this show and just look at it as, um, look at the story that we're telling and just, identify with a black character in the way that so many black viewers have been identifying with white characters you know like we you know, like that's something that we do all the time and that, and people act as if it's like a really tough thing to <laughs> to have a black person at the center of a story and that you know white people won't identify and it's like well they 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 can they can do that work too Absolutely. you know yeah i love what marcus represents i love um the amazing job that she did bringing him to life. I found him to be inspiring, hopeful, and unafraid. And I walked away from this season feeling less cynical about finding a lasting love. So thank you. Oh, <laughs> great. Oh. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for talking with blackfilm.com. Thank you. Appreciate you.